In my perception, culture is a basic need. I would like to say it's, it's a very broad term. And it also it's a very plural term, it's an organic term, it's completely always evolving and cultivating and developing. And that combined with technology can, can bring results which I would say would never imagine actually before. In the beginning it started with the curiosity of the technology and that was the, the really the, the era, the time when we were defining all the digital objects and, and it almost became a reality. And we just recently did a project about life on the moon and what could be that life. And um, we wanted to devise a simple aid, a simple object to help people uh, go and go in outer space and use it in a very everyday life, actually. And that led to an object called Moonwalker. Looking at the environment of the moon and this project being such a conceptual idea, we thought, why not? It could become a reality. It could almost become a reality in our lifetime, I can say. I think design and technology are very synonymous and they are very interlinked. And technology for, for the sake of technology becomes very impersonal. And I think the real task of a designer is to demystify technology, to humanize it, to make it accessible, usable. This project really initiated in way back in 2002, when nobody was really thinking about radiators so much. And the amount of energy it takes to heat up the place is tremendous. So I wanted to have a radiator bang in the middle of the space, where the air could pass through. It is beautiful enough that really it becomes a seamless part of architecture and the technology is absolutely invisible. Finally, what you see is a beautiful object, which is very sensorial, which it invites you to touch and feel. And to create that, we've gone through lots of series of prototyping to be able to do that. And we succeeded in making industrial project out of it. There's sometimes a bit too much of a talk about high-tech and low technology. And as much as we need iPhone today, we also need a hammer. And sometimes we forget that. And I, I want to again provoke that kind of thought. The idea was to make a ceramic chair means a structural object, which was a huge challenge. And when we talk about ceramic, everybody thinks they understand because it's an object a material we all every day use. But when you talk about a carbon fiber, everybody thinks it's a high tech, it's a racing car and so forth. What we did in this project is combine ceramic with carbon fiber. That's not for any functional reason. I mean, the ceramic chair in itself is strong enough and a carbon fiber chair will be stronger than ceramic in it on itself. But by combining it, we almost created a new material, which traditionally is not there and never done. And at the same time, created a new provocation to call it, is it high tech or low tech? Because that's a meaningless debate anyway. The idea was to really understand that tactility, sensorial quality, and how one could bring back that one into technological product. Seamlessly put it together, synthesize it with something which is a state of art technology. I've always been curious about creating a language, if one could call a form language, which will have understanding of a past, projection of a future, but also somehow belongs to that time. This is easier to say, but very hard to achieve in every project. But that's always been objective. When it comes to define a geometry, very, very articulate geometry, it's often tough to do it directly in a computer. So we, some places where it was not possible to get the, the quality one wants in a computing, we quickly made the models and scan it, 3D scanning it, and went back to computing again, actually. And these kind of constant reverse engineering, making by hand and combiningly seamlessly with the technology we have, you can bypass this problem. I think the fundamental uh, reason to create is a curiosity. Your curiosity leads to ideas, thoughts, and those thoughts lead to creations. Each project for me is a personal journey, one leading to another, and it's a possibility to think and go deeper and deeper and deeper, and cultivate your idea, cultivate your mind. 
The Alina, the shelving system was really, we really defined together with the, the, the manufacturer, very much a strategy that we want to create object which, which will be a shelving, uh, but which could be shipped across the planet with, with a very minimum space. We've managed to solve that just by creating three parts. And the technology we use is extrusion uh, manufacturing in aluminium. And all the three parts, even one, the central part, doesn't seem to be extruded. Really a technology where one has to think of all the issues before, that once it's extruded, it just has to fit together. I really love those kind of challenges in a, in a project. Having done the other experiments with materials and understanding other cultures and understanding the past, now the objective and the aspiration is to, to, to really take on projects and, and collaborate where, where one could define the new typologies, new possibilities which are not there yet. And also critical point of view towards the current technologies and where it can go. And that's I think is a huge, huge possibility and opportunity to, to really contribute as a designer.